Hey guys, my name is John Kim. I'm a licensed therapist and life coach, putting self-betterment into a shot glass. Because let's face it, who's got that much time these days? I come unpolished, unrehearsed, on purpose. If you're looking for more of a wine glass, you've come to the wrong place. First, I want to say thank you for all the reviews you guys are writing me on this podcast. You know, there's a difference between clicking like uh, and actually sitting down and writing a review and that is gold it's meaningful and i really appreciate all the love um and it also you know helps spread the message so i i it means the world to me thank you for that one of the reasons why i love podcasting is because i don't have to wipe the blood from my eyes from staring at the screen for so long if you're a writer you know what i'm talking about um it's refreshing to create a dialogue and not have to you know just punch keys because I've just been doing that for so long so today I want to talk about um, marriage advice and listen this is actually something that I found on the internet and I don't know if it's true or not but it says uh, it, it says Brad Pitt's best marriage advice after you know um, he got his divorce and kind of like him looking back so I don't trust the internet I don't know who it's by um, I don't to be honest with you, I don't think they're his words because it's a lot. Maybe some of it, some of them are. I don't know. Uh, but I'm gonna take some of the things that really stood out for me and um, put it through my lens and kind of expand on it. I think there's some really good stuff here. So, number one, and listen, you don't have to be in a marriage for this to work. This is uh, uh, for for anyone in any relationship, or if you're not in a relationship, these are things to definitely consider, chew on. Um, think about as you get into one. And this article is angled toward men, um, but it's, it's obviously it's for both the genders. First one, never stop courting. And I think this is so important because, you know, there's, there's that courting process, that chase um, in the beginning when you're trying to pursue someone. And it's exciting and people go above and beyond. And, you know, this is when we're washing our cars on the dates and um, buying flowers and saying really nice things. And hopefully you mean them too. Um, and then you get into a relationship and over the years or over the weeks or months, uh, people get into their routines and the courting stops. And it's sudden, you know, it's, it's Netflix. And it's not, not that there's anything wrong with Netflix because I, I love the pajamas and Netflix and doing nothing to me that's that can also be um, date night right that could also be courting but we, we tend to get caught up in life and we forget that um, chemistry and romance and, and, and you know we forget to to fan that fire right it, even though there's a organic natural chemistry there you definitely still have to work on it so never stop courting if you are in a marriage or a relationship what does courting look like for you, and, are, and and did you stop? You know, are you putting effort into it? Number two, protect your own heart. Um, I think this is really interesting and something that people forget. Um, I think we also kind of lose ourselves, and I think what 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 protecting your heart means is uh, is to love yourself as well as the other person, because relationships are two whole people coming together and sharing their life. It's not sacrificing your life it's not you know you suddenly don't matter and you give everything to the other person there are nurturers who um get a lot of satisfaction from you know caring for someone for taking care of someone and there's nothing wrong with that that doesn't mean that they're going to lose themselves um the, you know a lot of those people are gravitate uh, gravitate toward jobs like nursing becoming therapist um there's a nurturing aspect to me you know Wanting to take care of someone is not a bad thing. It's it's when you lose yourself. So always remember to um, love yourself, self-compassion, right? Take care of your own heart as well as uh, caring for the person you love. <clears throat> Fall in love over and over again. Now this... I don't know. I think people think that you fall in love once and it's over, right? And then it's like, oh, good. It's so, we passed that. We're done. Uh, it's going to be smooth sailing. And, it, and of course, it's, it's not. I think we fall in love and, and, and out of love and in love and out of love. And I think it's a dance. I think it's, um, it, it's up and down. It's a process. And I love this idea <clears throat> that you have to or that you should fall in love over and over again. Ask yourself what that looks like for you. You know, are you uh, in your relationship right now? Are you in love? 
Um, what it what would it look like to actually fall in love again? What would need to happen for that to happen? You know, what can you do on your side? Always see the best in. Well, here it says her, but always see the best in the other person. I love this because we tend to, when we get into something comfortable, we tend to start um, finding all the, the things that are wrong with the person, right? And that's very easy to do. Um, the shortcomings, the things that annoy you, right? The uh, way they put the dishes away. <laughs> all the things that when you were in love or when you were you know with them in the beginning that you overlooked so it's you should change that you know as as you're you know three years deep or if you're 10 years in or five years in and and uh the the relationship is kind of you know on cruise control and the things that they're doing is really kind of annoying to you it's time to start seeing the best in the person and this takes effort it doesn't come naturally we don't just always walk around and and, and hang out with people and always see the best in them especially if we are in a relationship and we're getting to know them very well we don't see the best in them we naturally see the things that bother us we naturally want to control right so instead Try to go the other way and try to see the best in someone. And that will definitely contribute to um, falling in love again, you know, seeing the best, seeing the parts in the person that you forgot about, right? They're still there. You're just not seeing them. And it's your job to start seeing them. This next one is it's not your job to change or fix him or her. So, um, yeah, and, and here let me add to that. It's not your job to make someone happy and that's a huge one i think that we <clears throat> sorry i'm losing my voice we as individuals when we're coming into a relationship we have an obligation for our own happiness um and, and listen i'm not saying you have to do it alone or hopefully you're getting supported and encouragement etc but um it is not the other person's job to make you happy it's not the other person's job to fix you we are our, we are all on our own journeys and when we get into something whether you know if it's a, a, a boyfriend girlfriend situation um, or boyfriend boyfriend or girlfriend girlfriend whatever if it's that situation or if you're dating or if it's a marriage or whatever it is not your job to fix people and you know I don't even think people are broken so like that term kind of bothers me that you have to fix someone people go through stages people evolve people go through turbulence people learn about themselves etc and um, it's not your job to uh, prevent that process it's not your job to quote unquote fix that process again it's also not your job to make someone happy right especially at your own expense Take full accountability. This is the next one. I think taking ownership is everything. If you're with someone who never owns their shit, yeah, there's going to be anger, resentment, and things will never get resolved, right? Taking ownership is where you start off with a blank canvas. Taking ownership is where you reset the, the, uh, the argument or whatever the conflict is. People have to own their shit in order for, uh, their, for glue to be produced, for you know, closeness to happen, for trust to be built. So if you're, if both people are taking ownership, um, then the fights are going to be healthy. It's never about how many times you fight, right? It's always about how you fight. Never blame. Here it says never blame your wife, but in general, never blame. I think blaming is a losing game. You know, uh, something happens, and if and here's the thing: if people take ownership, there is no blame. There's no need to blame if people are owning their shit. It's usually because people are defensive and people are not owning, and that's why people start pointing fingers. So, don't blame. Instead, um, tell someone how you feel and how what they did makes you feel, but. Uh, pointing fingers and blaming and, and even past that there's people who uh, start assassinating character all that stuff is it's uh it's rotting and deteriorating and crippling your relationship so don't blame next one allow your woman to just be well your man too. allow people to be themselves i think that's uh huge i think that when we get into relationships especially people who um are are you know <laughs> have very uh, cemented definitions and who are uh, tend to be controlling, right? Um, who People who see things a certain way. It's very hard for them to allow the person they love to just be because they're going to have a lot of suggestions. And you got to let people just be. 
um, the, the worst thing you can do in any relationship is trying to make someone um, someone that they're not, you know? And if that is your goal, then that's not loving someone. That is, uh, That has to do with your own insecurity. That has to do with, uh, you know, something inside you that you are uh, struggling with. And so by changing someone else, that makes you feel better about yourself. Next one, be silly. I have no problem with that. <laughs> I, um, I definitely encourage silliness and humor and being yourself. I think that that state is where fun and magic happens. Next one, give her space. Uh, give him space as well. People need their own space. People need their own lives. There are things that we get from our... Um, there are things that I get from my boys, and I don't mean like my children, but like my guy friends, and there are things that uh, women get from their girlfriends that uh, she's not going to get from her partner or or he's not going to get from her, you know? Um, we need our own space to do our own thing. So it doesn't matter if it's an activity or if it's friends or if it's a you know, girls' night out or whatever it is. Uh, if you are doing every single thing together, you know, if you are going to the gym together, doing all the social events together, all your friends are the same, uh, there's just so much room for meshment and codependency, and suddenly it's not two people doing life together, it's two people who have kind of like converged into this one person, and that's definitely not healthy. Be fully transparent and vulnerable. Uh, this is obvious, something I've been talking about for years. I don't think anything can be built without it. I think it's the soil to everything. We definitely need to be vulnerable, show ourselves, uh, talk about our feelings. Think about it this way. If you don't, you're leaving people in the dark and it's not fair to them. You know, Then you're not doing life with the person. You're doing life around the person. Let me say that again because it's really important. If you're in a relationship, if you're in a marriage or whatever you're in, the, the thing is that you're signing up to do life with that person. And so if you're doing life with that person, it doesn't matter if you're going through a shitty time or whatever's happening. You're sharing that, right? You're not asking the person to fix it, but you're sharing it. If not, because you don't want to rock the boat or you're scared of what they're going to say or you know whatever the issue is, and you bottle everything up inside, then you are no longer doing life with the person. You're doing life around the person. Um, you're not showing yourself. You're leaving them in the dark. And that's definitely not what love looks like. So be transparent, be vulnerable. If it's bad news, then you guys, you know, tackle it together and that'll make you closer, right? So that leads to the next one, which is never stop growing together. They say that if you're not growing together, you're growing apart. Uh, I think it's true. I think that um, there's always growing and learning and evolving there's this process that's always happening it's kind of like the internal engine of a relationship and when that stops um, then what happens is you start drifting right and that's where it gets dangerous when people start looking over the fence or start noticing other people when you're growing together and when people are on the same page um, there's nothing more beautiful there's nothing more meaningful I mean that's where love and relationships just just you know become easy and become um, like the foundation, right? This one's really cool. I love this one. Forgive immediately. Um, I love the word immediately because sometimes we choose to forgive and it takes us months and we hold grudges and resentment. And listen, if you're going to forgive, man, just, just fucking forgive and do it fast, you know? Don't don't sit there and, 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 and use it as a card, you know? Don't, don't tell yourself, I'm going to forgive if, or don't make it conditional, so if someone does something wrong and you decide that you want to forgive that person for hurting you, for doing whatever, um, do it fast. Mean it, you know? And then don't bring that back up in a fight and use it as leverage. I think a lot of people do that. They'll say that they forgave someone for something, and then when a fight comes out, they pull that card back out and say, oh, well, remember when you did this? You know, and that's completely unfair. All right, that's it, guys. Those are some tips. I think... Um, they're, they're pretty good tips. If you are in a relationship of any kind, remember to not make it about you and remember to, um, to love hard and to uh, 
uh, try to understand before trying to be understood. And everything I said in this um, podcast are important. And we all know that relationships are built, and this is how you build it. It's intention. It's working on these things. Um, it's not just hoping that the chemistry is going to drive you, you know, 10 years deep into a relationship, and it's going to be amazing because that never happens. Everything in a relationship fluctuates. Relationships are dynamic. They go up. They go down. They go sideways. And, of course, all the shit that life throws at you and your partner, and then that's going to affect the relationship. I mean, there's so many things every day that happens that impact your relationship, and you guys as a couple have a choice on how to handle that. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Be well. Thanks for tuning in. I hope the dialogue was helpful. Listen, guys, if you want to be a life coach, just go to my website, theangrytherapist.com, and click on Life Coaching Training, and you'll find our Catalyst Intensive There's only two things you need to be a life coach, a story which everyone has and a passion to help others.